there's these three categories that constantly appear and it's pioneer, settler, town planner is kind of the framework. But I think a lot of times that commodity mindset of producing widgets really well, lean manufacturing, et cetera, appears on the right with the town planners. And so we'll over-rotate on that for a while. And then we'll over-rotate on the innovators, the pioneers, right? And we go back and forth between those to various results, but we never really focus in my mind, at least I haven't seen it, somebody can correct me, a focus on those settlers. All right, so on that note, right, talking about speed, talking about sort of policy change, talking about the connectivity between users and builders and sort of program managers and funders and all of that. Mm -hmm. Um, OG, it's sort of the software factory revolution. You know, a software factory has sort of, I think we can confidently say today, it means everything and nothing (laughs) at the same time. Like I have no (laughs) idea what a software factory means anymore. Yeah, Um, unfortunate. But yeah, I mean, we'll get back to pendulum swings, right? Yeah. It's software factory is like, I don't know, it's the new crypto. Yeah. Um, but sort of popping the hood off of it. Like, I'd love to just kind of hear, you know, the core tenants or the principles or sort of the foundation, you know, because there's going to be somebody out there who's listening who's, hey, all right, like the solution to this problem is a software factory. And, you know, Rounds already left the barrel, right? It's budgeted yeah. for. They're slinging. How should they be thinking about it? Like, what are some of the ethos? What's it really like, sort of under the hood, building something like that from scratch? You can kind of take it in a couple different directions, but would yeah. be really interested to hear the perspective. Yeah, we'd have to first say like what all I include in there because unfortunately, uh, and I think Air Force leadership for a while drove a lot of this. Started equating software factory with platform, or platform plus tool chain if they don't include that in the platform definition. And that's not all, all of what we intended at Kessel Run. And be very clear, like Kessel Run brought this term back into existence. It apparently had been used in the DoD a long time ago. And the history of how we ended up using it was Eric Schoonover, who was the Air Force Digital Service rep. Uh, he, he was really great ideas guy. He had just come out of an embattled OCX. Great story to read about. Um, it's also featured in Jen Palka's new book that I recommend everybody read, Recoding America. Tremendous book. Yes. Uh, especially if you want to get into this space heavily. I, I thought I knew this space well and I like every page was a page turner. I was learning new things. Um, but his idea was like, we need to use a term for this that is palatable to the people that think in hardware. Um, so like factory was the natural result. And then everybody on the ground at Kessel Run was like, that sounds terrible. Who wants to work in a factory? And where we kind of landed as a team is I was like, hey, we've been talking about Toyota production system a lot. And I use a lot of Toyota examples. Um, Numi is one of my favorite ones about culture transformation. And I was like, what if we think about this more like the Toyota production system, which is not a building or a building plus an assembly line. When they talk about it, that's, that's just an outcropping of their culture. So they would say culture drives process, drives technology. When you talk about the Toyota production system, it's always evolving, but it always is based on where their culture is at at any given moment. And based on those outcomes they're aligned on, they have processes and then their technology is a reflection of that. Yeah. So a software factory to me is putting together all of the things required to build and deliver software to end users. And that, that includes acquisitions, like all these support functions, as well as you know, not just the platform and the tool chain, but really even more important, the people building those things and the people building the software that's getting deployed on top of them. So um, to me, a platform is just a component of a software factory, but putting those things together in the best way to create value and minimize waste, that should be the goal that we're all striving towards. And I hear, a, I hear well, two things on this. One, and I'll come back to the actual point. But first time I met Eric Schoonover, right? have a nice, huge, awesome meeting. Like my mind's blown. I was like, man, I got to connect to this guy on, on LinkedIn. So go to find him on LinkedIn. It's a picture of him holding the cat. His job title is world's greatest lover. And I was like, <laughs> God damn American hero. <laughs> I, I will forever say. be on that man's team. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, wait, what? <laughs> and uh, it was, that was hilarious. But on sort of the point about it, not just being platform, I think one of the, the themes I've heard throughout is people sort of over-rotating on a specific piece of technology or a specific process and not having the, the appropriate sort of appreciation for the amount that the human plays in this role. And that it's mm-hmm. not a 
push button, get software, push button, secure software, push button, run software. There are people building every aspect of that and running and supporting. And the way you're going to get an organization to, to move at speed and scale is by investing in those people and the culture and the operating system to use your, your sort of mission OS. I think there's a human sort of organizational side of that mm-hmm. that oftentimes gets overlooked as we're talking about sort of like the glitter and the rage of like the next cool tech. Is that a fair kind of summation? Yeah. yeah. And it's funny because it very much mirrors what happened with Toyota in America uh, because it's a very American way to look at the problem. Um, very Taylorist type of mindset. And in fact, GM tried to copy Toyota over and over again. They would go into their plants and copy everything. Toyota didn't even care because they knew instinctively, like, that's not what matters. You can copy my technology all day long. And in America, would a great example is Toyota has an on-down cord. We pull the on-down cord, the entire assembly line stops and a manager, get this, comes out and helps you with the issue that you're having. So America installed on-down cords in their factory floor. Nobody ever pulled them because when you pulled the on-down cord, I got yelled at, right? You got yelled yep. at. Yeah. So like, uh, it, it, it's a perfect example of, of uh, you know, kind of our overarching American culture, which has a lot of really great aspects to it. Um, kind of struggling in certain aspects it is a very factory mindset. And I think we haven't moved forward from scientific management and Taylorism uh, in our management ranks. And that's especially the case in a lot of military leadership and management. Yeah, I will. Uh, I can't. I can't miss the opportunity as a former Alvin Toffler disciple to say that sounds very industrial age <laughs> in terms of how yeah. we think it. But it is. I mean, that's what the Tofflers talked about as a second wave sort of problem is where like everything kind of flowed up and that manager really controlled everything and all information flowed through there and all decisions flowed through there and all control versus sort of a more traditional, almost like a Buddhism, like the waterfall flows a different way. Um, Mm-hmm. But it's like philosophically out of reach for a lot of how we've built America. And that requires a, a pretty material sort of mental model mm-hmm. transformation. Yeah. Yeah. And where our culture really thrives is, is in producing innovations, right? And so um, there's this interesting thing of, of figuring out how to meet in the middle because Toyota at some point, um, at various points actually, uh, has come forward and said things like, uh, you know, they've lost the innovation spirit and they want to harness some of the American aspects of, of culture. Uh, and I think uh, there's this really great strategist. His name's uh, Simon Wardley. Uh, he's a European um, tech guru. He has this great talk called Crossing the River by Feeling the Stones. And in it, he, he talks about his, he has a book about it too called Wardley Mapping. But essentially, uh, one of the things that's really important in this Wardley map that he produces, uh, which is supposed to give you like maps, maps have meaning, right? So a lot of times we call things like a road map, but it's not actually a map. Um, So he gets really technical about what a map is. And then when he maps out your business landscape, uh, there's these three categories that constantly appear and it's pioneer, settler, town planner is kind of the framework that he uses to think about it. And there are several other similar ones. Um, But I think a lot of times that commodity mindset of producing widgets really well, lean manufacturing, et cetera, appears on the right with the town planners. Um, And so we'll over-rotate on that for a while. And then we'll over-rotate on the innovators, the pioneers, right? And we go back and forth between those to various results, but we never really focus in my mind, at least I haven't seen it, somebody can correct me, a focus on those settlers. And um, those are the people that bridge the gap. And I think if we have a settler-based culture, it's easy to move things from pioneer to town planner um, and uh, with a lot less tension as well. And so I think that's an aspect that's missing it as well. So if I were really getting technical about how I want my factory to look, and, and probably a mistake that we made at Kessel Run was not figuring out how to have that balance. Safi Bacall in Loon Shots, he calls it state transfer. Um, you have to love your artists and your soldiers equally. Um, and figuring out how to manage the state transfer between them. And uh, that's the next struggle. Yeah. 